So, but they've caught me now. Good to go? All right. Um, thank you, everybody, for being here. I think we're still expecting a couple people, but um, I know Betsy said that obviously with the festival this weekend, she may not be here. Can't blame her there. Um, and then Brian said he was going to be around to clean up late. So let's just go ahead and get started. Um, to start with, there is a new face in the room, which I'm super excited about. Um, Jackson Tuff is our new tourism manager. He's going to be starting on Monday. Yes. So I've been spending the last few weeks kind of trying to get everything organized to prepare to kind of cast the torch. Um, I'll be working with Jackson, I'm sure, a lot to get him up to speed and ready to go. And we've got a lot of things coming very quickly. Um, so kind of trial by fire around here, Jackson. But welcome. We're happy to have you. Uh, so with that, uh, I guess we can just get rolling. Um, Do we need to let Jackson know who else who he's talking to? Oh, you know, that's here, a maybe? great idea. <laughs> Never, everyone We've met. Uh, We've met. I just. Oh. Who wants to start? I'll go. This is our rough side. Sure. Kirk Sharp, Gordon Park Museum. Mm -hmm. Yes. Frank Adamson, Coral Hotel and Spa. And the Ape Bill Michaud with the uh, Sleep Inn and the Empress Event Center. Lindsay Madison with Fort Scott Chamber. Carl Brenner with uh, Fort Scott National Historic Site. You want to go for it? You bet. I'm Rhonda Dunn with E3 Ranch and Company. I think we met. <laughs> I might have been at your wedding. <laughs> Thanks, Rob. Yeah. <laughs> Laura Ag. I am a local chaplain and part of the Old Professional. Thank you, Bill. Um, so now let's jump in. I apologize. I thought I was being super smart and put this all in packet form before I printed it, so it kind of got all wacky in the print, but hopefully you can make heads and tails of what you're actually looking at here. Um, our budget is, we're kind of moving right along here. I know with um, Jackson starting and uh, that tourism manager position uh, being 100% from this budget. Um, Susan is going to have to do a budget amendment in the coming weeks to um, allow for that. And as we know, our TGT is picking up nicely, so we do have room to make that budget amendment. It just it doesn't reflect on what you see today. Um, and this is a comparable of activity from last year to this year and kind of gives you an idea of where it is we stand today. As if anybody, does anybody have any questions about the budget specifically? Well, hello there. Okay. Right at the front. Table. Yeah. Right at the table. <laughs> <laughs> we could be, we could be bruised and battered by this. <laughs> know that the budget's a lot of information to take in, so if you do have questions about it, definitely give me a shout and uh, we can talk through it uh, with that comparative statement. It's, it's a lot of data. Well, um, I want to make sure I understand something correctly. So looking at um, the top section, which is on two pages, we are 5,947 under 2020's activity. Correct about a little over 10%, we're not quite 11% down. But year, we have spent, and I'm looking at year to date, we've spent 24,875 compared to 12,000 the year before, right? So we spent, oh, that's a surplus, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, we spent 43,000 last year and we've only spent 25 this year. So we're 18,000 under on spending and 6,000. So being conservative with spending on top of helps yes. offset the loss of yeah. money. And the impact for changing from part-time to full-time director, manager will be a negative impact to the 
to the spending. existing budget. Yes. Right. Um, because my I switched over to community development in May, so it will comparatively look like a lot more um, when you look at your next budget cycle. Okay. Um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I sent the tourism guest tax collection out when we received it. It would have been the end of April. Um, so we are expecting another payment here in just a couple weeks. Um, so I sent that out and just let you all know that we were slowly creeping up. Um, still, obviously, not back to 2019 numbers, but certainly getting very close, which is pretty exciting. And clearly, events are starting back up, and I think we're going to start hitting some uh, much better TGT numbers in the next two quarters. So does anyone have any questions, budget, TGT minutes, before we move on to old business? And I apologize, I'm moving quickly. I scheduled this poorly. We found out today we've got a 5 o'clock special meeting planned, so trying to move us along here. <laughs> um, the next thing to discuss is the um, tourism goal update. So that's on your last two pages, kind of wacky. Um, the first goal that we set was to increase revenue um, by 5%, and I felt like with the numbers we were seeing that it would push us a little bit to try for an increase of 15% instead of 5%, just because we know we're not going to be nearly as bad off as we were in COVID year, um, and things are picking up, increasing really quickly. So I think that the 15% is a good target to have 5% is almost laughable to be kind of a target. Um, and I've kind of mentioned before that just for this first year of this um, tool, we are using the Forts Visitor Count simply because that's a hard number that we can utilize to estimate vis visitor spending. Um, the state does a really fantastic job of providing visitor spending estimates that cover a wealth of information. They just seem pretty inflated to me. Um, they're talking multi-million dollars worth of visitor, visitor spending, and I question the accuracy of that just because they're looking at shops and restaurants, and we know a lot of locals are hitting those things too. So um, that's the reason for the way we've done it. Um, we do use the visitor spending estimates that the state has thrown out there and tweaked them just a little bit, actually a 30% reduction to consider where we are in the world. Um, so you'll notice both visitor spending and your TGT goal were a little bit more than a quarter of the way there. Um, I did look back at previous years, and that seems to be pretty typical. Um, we really kind of hit our stride this time of year and start picking up really quickly. So that quarter at first to me was a little concerning, but then when I started looking into previous years, it was less concerning because it seems to be kind of the trend. Um, we also set a goal to increase the annual economic impact. Um, the goal for this year is 350,000 plus. Um, as of right now, we're a little more than a quarter with that bubble tournament. We hit about $206,000. And I'm still waiting on um, our economic impact numbers from 6A baseball and a couple of the tournaments we've done so far. <laughs> and of course, we've got more baseball coming up. Um, we've got the uh, Waikiki Summit tournament coming up also. So um, I feel pretty confident that we'll hit that mark. <sighs> Groups and conventions. I know we've had several day trips that have come through. Really the goal for this year was just to kind of try to recapture what we lost for last year. So I think we're moving in the right direction on that. Lindsay, I know you all have been working with day trips. Are we seeing that? I assume you're seeing that pick up since I know we've had more people in buses. Yeah, the last two were really full. I think there were 46 on the last one and 54 on the one before that. People are right. excited to travel. Yeah, it's great. Um, and I, I think we'll start to really see those things really get rolling. I have gotten some that had canceled and planned to come in the spring and then pushed it back again and are now planning on the fall. So I think from now moving through the fall, we'll see start to see those numbers rising again. Um, at this point, I don't believe we have an overnight trip book. We have been working with an um, entity that was planning a fall trip. They were looking at September or October. 
still working on that. They don't have their numbers quite where they need to be yet. Um, so hopefully I'll have better news for you or Jackson will have better news for you at the next meeting. <laughs> Um, from the LaRoche complex, of course, we did not get three winter weekends this, this year, but we did get a bubble tournament, and we hope that we can make that sort of an annual thing, and then moving forward, we can begin to see more um, winter baseball. Of course, we have already secured fall baseball tournaments, and the RFP for the NCBA baseball tournament should be coming out, I want to say last year, it came out either the very end of June or very early in July. So any day now, and I know that things are going back to normal. Um, they typically in the past have played um, just outside of Charlotte, North Carolina. I have no idea if they'll be looking to go back to Charlotte or if they would maybe be willing to work with us. Um, they did indicate that they would be reaching out when the RFP went live. So obviously Jackson has put in some great RFPs and getting ready for the next this year. Marketing trade show wise, I don't have a lot to share with you. There's only been um, one event so far this year. It was the Wichita Women's Fair. It was not nearly as well um, visited as it has been in years past, of course, um, it was in April. Um, it went well, certainly met with a lot of people. Unfortunately, nobody else from the Southeast Kansas region came to that event. We actually, um, the sector group actually paid so it was great representation for Fort Scott since nobody else was there to speak about their community. Um, so definitely met a lot of people. The next, hopefully the next thing is Missouri Bank Travel. Um, they have not made an announcement yet that I have seen, but typically that's in the fall. And then the KSAE is typically in December. So I'm hopeful that those things will actually occur. And finally, secure KS Travel grant funding. That grant cycle is opening back up. Um, I believe applications are due August 1st, so I will be working on Keith Jackson to come up with a good project for that to um, get some ideas in. So if anybody has an idea on what we could go after for that project, it is a marketing um, grant project and it has to be for something that we have never done before. So it has to be a new, interesting concept to go after those dollars. So, oh, that was a lot. Does anybody have any questions about the goals piece? We'll take that as a no. Um, well, I guess I already gave you the trade show update. On the very back is the LaRoche schedule. Um, I did send out an, an email earlier this week. Josh Regan has not won the three tournaments this weekend. I believe he's got an eight and under, an 11 under, and a 16 and under. So there's going to be a crazy amount of baseball people in town this weekend. And he did cancel his July 4th tournament. So I've reached out to the Midwest Nationals to see if they would be willing to pick that weekend up. Um, I have not heard back yet, but usually it takes them a couple days to get back with me. So fingers crossed. I know the um, the guys on the ground would like to have the weekend off, but if we can get something scheduled, sorry about the luck, I guess. <laughs> and from there, we basically have every weekend full of something. Um, and then uh, we do have one tournament that's come up in August, which is exciting. We typically don't have August baseball. Um, so we'll have that one John Hill tournament, August 5th or 8th, and then we'll have a short break before um, September Midwest Nationals kicks off and gets rolling for the fall. So, moving on to new business. <clears throat> Upcoming events. Uh, the YP Summit, we're looking at scheduling for August 1st. We have had everything planned for this event for a really, really, really long time. So we're really just kind of ready to get moving on it. Um, and then it will be interesting because we have to get the summit back on track. So we need the next one to be in the spring, which is April, May. Can I ask a question? Yes. August or October 1st? October. Did I say August? I'm sorry. October, yes. And the next YP Summit, spring 2022. Apparently I was trapped in 2020 when I wrote this agenda. So um, 
Jackson will have a lot of work ahead of him, hopefully a lot of help too. Um, the Veterans Day celebration, of course, will be the 9th through 11th, so we'll need to get started planning on that soon. And then the really big news, the big Kansas road trip is making its way here next May 5th through 8th. So we'll actually have um, the YP Summit probably in April, the big Kansas road trip in May, um, 6A State Baseball, it seems like, is a positive for next year, so that would be the end of May, and then the um, all-school reunion is in June, so are you nervous yet? No, I do <laughs> Okay, <laughs> it's a lot of stuff. Um, so that's kind of the end of the agenda. If you, I don't know if anybody has any questions, any ideas. As I mentioned, I've spent probably the last month just trying to pull things together, so I have some details to share with Jackson and kind of get him um, rolling in the right direction really quickly. So. We'll have a celebration too in October. Big party celebration. Yeah. 7th through the 9th. October 7th through the 9th. Jackson and Rose is going to be. I'll tell you Monday. <laughs> At 8.05? 8.05, <laughs> brother. <laughs> On a tear to get everything kind of yes. wrapped up in a bow yes. before you leave? Yes, getting it all squared away. And, and actually, I have a uh, our uh, annual meeting and community awards is tomorrow. So I've been just trying to, I've been inundated with that. But Monday morning, right here. Good deal. We interview, you interviewed a seaman who said those dates, June something that seemed like way in the way in the future forever. But it got here quick, didn't it? It yeah. got here all well between getting married, moving, and honeymoon, and, and work there. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, it's flown by. Yeah, so, but, but I'm excited to be here and get started. We're excited too. I know I'm excited. Bill pointed out that maybe that would be a good idea. Yeah. 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 Because uh, there's some, some great leaders that he's known. So he's our hero. He's our hero chief. You bet. I think the only two we're missing today, uh, Rena from the Fort Scott Inn is going to be a member for not much longer. Um, I believe she said she's moving in August. So at that time, it might be time to look for another member. Um, and then Betsy Reichert is not here. She owns the Lavender Patch. And Betsy, Betsy has her big Lavender Fest this weekend. So she obviously has a few things going on. Well, I'm going to be there Saturday. Good deal. Hopefully not a hospital. <laughs> Hopefully not. My goodness. Work yourself to the bone. <laughs> I feel like we got through that really quickly. Is there anything else we need to discuss? Or? I'd like to bring up a couple things. The this is we're falling into grant cycle time. Yeah, clearly. And the Southeast Kansas uh, Community Foundation, based out of Pittsburgh, which our foundation is a part of, their um, grant application process is going right now, I believe. And I I can't remember if it's the end of June or end of July on that. And they like to support arts humanities education, all kinds of things. And when you think about things that we can need, that's a great way to get funding as well. The Fort Scott Area Community Foundation, I'm probably going to say that quite right, their cycle begins in August and ends in August, at the end of August. And I think they've given grants to uh, tourism in the past. If I remember they right. have. We received a grant to get the um, Veterans Day celebration off the ground. And this would be a great chance, again, to find some funding for something we need. And that was the Fort Scott Community Foundation. Okay. I just got a grant over there. So Great. we're very glad. So. And then the other one is the Southeast Kansas Community Foundation. If you can't find that, I have a email from that foundation to for the I think they the really shelter. stated that like two thirds of the funds were designated towards youth projects mm -hmm. and a third were towards basic needs projects. So if we I mean if they did it might need to be a youth Incorporate youth yep. somehow. That'd be great. That's kind of their mm -hmm. target for this cycle. 
I'll tell you, we probably need to pass on to the mayor. I know he's been working on the um, splash pad for Gun Park. Yeah. That could be a youth project that would work. Maybe, and I think it's a tourism connected. Uh -huh. People will probably come here to see our beautiful park and then splash on the pad. But um, anyway, I just wanted to pass those on that those grants are in their processes are starting. Um, the Fort Scott one, um, Lindsay's a member, she probably knows way better than I do, will be grant, they, you apply in August and I believe you award them in no, November. And those are, our community doesn't, can be Bourbon County, but it's local. Okay. Locally spent. Rhonda, with the Kansas Department of Tour and Travel and all that stuff, um, I know that through some other research that I've done on some other projects, they have a matching grant through the Kansas Department of Wildlife, Parks, and Tourism mm -hmm. for different things like trails and, and additions and new parks and stuff. Is that the same grant you're talking about? Yeah. It's well, not through the state. That is a slightly, that is a different program. They, um, Parks and Wildlife does have a trails program. I want to say it's already wrapped. Um, the Riverfront Park has put in an app for some additional trails there. Um, and then the um, Kansas Travel has an attraction development grant on top of their um, marketing grant that can be used for its matching funds for a, developing a new attraction. I think that closed in like March. It did. Another thing to think about, this guy who's been painting some murals around town, he's doing some really cool yeah. stuff. And I don't know how that gets paid for. I don't know if that's, I need to go buy some paint and drop it at his house. I don't know how that works. But that could be a great way of thinking about an attraction or arts mm -hmm. um, that, you know, I see lots of people taking a picture in front of that patriotic one or going, I see, I saw prom pictures in front of the one at Gun Park and stuff. Very so cool. the more of those we can have, the better. I'm, and I know this is privately owned, but it would be a huge attraction if we could ever paint that silo where the Goodlander mill was. Mm -hmm. And well, that's something they they've been interest. interested in doing. Yeah. And maybe now we have an artist nearby. Yeah. And maybe we can find some funding to help some, a, a big attraction like that that would also make our community look a little better. Mm -hmm. Good point. What else? Thoughts, ideas? A million. <laughs> Actually, uh, Michelle and I decided to go to Ironton, Missouri uh, last weekend. Uh, if, if you've never heard of it, you might look up Elephant Rocks and Johnson shut-ins. and Great time. But uh, I was talking to the lady there at the, the uh, Ironton Chamber, and uh, she mentioned to me that they just got done with a, uh, a, a bike race and said it brought in a lot of visitors and a lot of money into their community, people staying for the weekend and so on and so forth. And I started thinking about, well, you know, the trails at Gun Park and, you know, I don't know, maybe there's an expansion on those someday. I but, uh, yeah, I mean, it, I, and she didn't give me any numbers and I, and I could probably call her and uh, get those from her, but, but evidently it was quite a weekend with a lot of revenue involved. I, I want to say, in, is it Emporia that does mile gravel bike race. I heard some talk about a potential gravel bike race here mm -hmm. that brings in crazy numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Started small and now it's just, which you're crazy if you're doing a 100 mile gravel bike race, but <laughs> if other people want to do it and come here to yeah. do it, we're good with that. Yeah. <laughs> the um, Bike Across America just is starting yes. and um, Larry Gasaway reposted a few years ago that he did the, you remember we all got bells to ring and all yes. that, and it was a lot of fun. And yeah. I know that there's somebody working on the, um, some local people um, work on the this being a stop, mm -hmm. you know, or a rest station or whatever, which I think is good. And then in July, I think the Marmoton Massacre is coming up, which it uses the Gun Park Trails. Mm -hmm. They moved it to September. To September. Yeah, that's, I'll just, I'd rather, I might have ride my bike around that <laughs> anyway. If so, you guys should buy tickets for that. But um, I'd rather be down there in September than July anyway. <laughs> it's a little bit cooler. So That's something that we've thought about at the, the port is this Healthy Parks is an initiative that the federal government has. 
um, and we just laid out all of the, the distances on all of our different walkways and stuff, but working with Gun Park and other things to do almost like a triathlon where you do the biking, you can get uh, kayaks or canoes on the Marmiton, and you can do the run to different parts of town or to the, uh, the port. Um, so to build and bring a lot of these different organizations together to make one bigger event. Mm -hmm. I know Frank Halsey would love to see either the triathlon or the massacre become a festival, like a festival atmosphere. And he, we were working on that and then we had COVID, so that stopped. So, you know, getting vendors here and food trucks and music and everything that goes with that is going to attract even more people. Has, has anyone ever monetized the bikes coming through as, as the bicycles go along Highway 54? They skirt around us pretty heavily when we yeah. came through last time. Yeah. yeah. Bikes across Kansas, I think it was, mm -hmm. in 18? Yes. Was it? yes. We were their final. Yeah. yeah, we're at a time stop, so they just kind of check in and yeah. yeah. We were in and yeah. before. Yeah. It was wonderful. Yeah. We, we tried to make them just always stop before Scott made them go for it. Didn't do it. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I understand that. Yeah. But they may come back someday. It was a cool event. Was there any impact from the good old days? I haven't heard from anyone in the community, but from what I saw, it didn't look like it was normal I have not heard from anyone on the committee <clears throat> but I will tell you this I had people that were in the hotel that have been coming for the last excluding last year for the last seven eight years and Friday evening we all had the same consensus was that oh no nobody's going to show up to this Saturday morning People were there. The, the food vendors and everything, they sold out of food by 1.30 in the afternoon. A lot of them sold out by 1. Um, I know Brian Williams with the Butcher Block told me that he went back to his shop three times to get any food to bring back down here. Yeah, they, they thought of everything. Yeah. Sold out of everything. Were, mm -hmm. were there as many vendors this year, though? Mm, they, there re was, they rearranged it a little bit, so it's kind of hard to tell. It was, yeah. uh, there, were, there were vendors, but uh, the people that stayed with me, they walked up onto Main, on the Main Street, and they came back and said, it looked just like a normal year for as far as the numbers of people between. Yeah. Yeah. Third the street. parade was huge. Yeah, the yeah. parade was the biggest parade I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the people from Third Street to Scoop and Supply, the, they said that it was just like you. So, I talked to several people that said they wish it was. I don't know if you uh, years ago the like nighttime dances used to be later, like nine to eleven, nine to midnight, and then at one point they changed them to seven to ten. And so, I mean, some people I talked to thought that, I mean, that kind of ends it that people want like that later street mm -hmm. entertainment. Street or whatever. Pop, so. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Sun, I mean, yeah, and you're just not, I don't yeah. know, it's not, doesn't, it's not the right atmosphere yet. For they, they didn't have a band, so it was two nights of soloists. This singing. year they have bands. Mm -mm. Well, the, the, um, the Wayward Betty's, the Wayward which Betty's, I think just yeah, one, it's, it's what they put them with, wasn't yeah. able to come. There was, yeah, so it was, there was one single. person singing Friday night and two people, and um, one person singing that. Saturday night playing and the other was playing guitar, so. So that's one thing I heard was that okay. they wish it would go back to like later in the, not go through the. I think the vendors, and I'm not on that committee anymore, I think the vendors felt there was more spending this year because there was no carnival to spend your money at. Mm -hmm. People were buying a little more because they had a little more in their pocket. Um, they did, I thought the free um, kids stuff was a really great idea, like the zip line, you didn't pay to do that. And the bounce houses, you didn't pay to do that. You're missing out. The zip line was probably good for school age kids compared to bounce houses, kind of a thing. Um, they used the third <laughs> block for the tractors they, that have always been on Wall Street. They relocated those to Third Street, and there were not very many of them. Now, those guys are getting older, and one of them passed away, and his tractor collection got split up. And so, so there's, you know, things change as you go along. But I think the addition of the free kids stuff is great for our community. I don't think that's 
drawing people off the highway to us or anything like that um, compared to a carnival. But then you have people who are very unhappy there was no carnival. And if you didn't know, it's because the carnival couldn't hire any people. Yeah. They didn't have any employees to bring to work it. That, that's true. That's it was true. a great event considering they didn't get permission from the health department. I think they had eight weeks to like really get everything mm -hmm. pulled together because they were waiting for the health department to give them that okay. So it was a great event considering as all things considered. And I thought the crowds were really good. I mean, on Saturday, and mm -hmm. I, the parade is always great. I, I think it's so good. Yeah, we the, ran into the back end of the parade. We got back. <laughs> when we started, yeah. we got some facts. Wow, we're in the parade again. <laughs> we're back. But the, I thought the street was was full, fuller mm -hmm. than we've seen it. Um, and like you said, people sold out. We sold out 150, 200 hamburgers up on National. You know, we weren't we weren't on Main Street, and so it, it was a good. We had fun. quite a few calls. I think people missed a car show, which Jesse yeah. uh, old. 54 cycles volunteered to put one on just a, a few weeks before but Sean said he had already presented to the commission like what was going to be blocked off and such sure. and didn't really have time to put it together but um so I think there are people willing to you know put that on um, and I know we had a number of calls of people asking to be a part of it. Well next year it'll be we'll have a year and a half and what lockdown passed and know what's going on maybe a little yeah. more clear so definitely see what, yeah. You know, good old days goes back to. I love. I personally would love to see good old days go back to being, you know, the Friday night dance, Saturday show, Saturday night dance, and Sunday event with the stuff. You know, all the vendors coming downtown. I would love to see that. But I'll tell you, as a person who obviously I chaired that committee, the vendors Sunday sales are low, and they don't want to afford an overnight stay, which we would love for them to do. Because the sales don't justify the extra expense. That's why it went from Sunday, no Sunday. Okay. I'm yeah. being selfish. No, I'm and I'm being selfish. I love to see them stay, and I think and I, I was the person who would browse on Saturday and shop on Sunday because crowds mm -hmm. were lighter, and they that didn't help the vendors at all. You know, yeah. kind of thing. But um, I I think I see a lot of requests for a gospel tent, gospel mm -hmm. music, and I think if we went contemporary Christian. That'd be pretty popular um, because we had a gospel tent for years. I served on that committee 10 or 15 years, and that was not utilized. And like the daytime entertainment wasn't utilized. People, we would pay for a tent, we'd put people under it, and there wouldn't be 10 people under the tent. So then we got rid of the tent, and we put it up on scubits, and there still wasn't 10 people. Beyond the people who were at the picnic tables eating, they didn't utilize that. So, you know, we, you try to evolve with the, what's the next thing, what's the next thing. And I'm with you. I'd love to see it be three days and four blocks full and maybe have the car show in that third block and fill it up. And we'll see where it goes. Rhonda, how can we be better involved in that studio? Would it make sense for us to offer help, you know, maybe a month before or two months before? If there's things that from our committee's perspective, things that we could be doing to either take something off their plate or for us to run with something that would get people maybe not from Fort Scott to come into town? Would, would that make sense or are they already doing something? Like that? You know, I think that's a great idea because I think you'll find the committee's first response is, hey, Rhonda, you think that you'd like a gospel tent? We'd love to see you do that. Let us know what you need. Mm -hmm. And that's, to me, a great response. You want a carnival? You can be in charge of the carnival. That's mm -hmm. great. Let us know what you need. So I think they would take any kind of input like that. We wouldn't have to wait till the last. We could start right now and say, we really want to do... We could piggyback you know, yeah, on both of our festivals. Right. <laughs> and then let's take on something that, that we would see people coming from. I, I think thought, it does. I thought that, 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 you know, from my perspective across the street there, I thought that it seemed pretty good for the year, mm -hmm. this year. I was surprised to see as many people as there were. Right. Um, but I was also surprised to see 45 people at the farm that were over the age of 90 last year, too. <laughs> and, and all of them up. So, <laughs> 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 And I, 
I agree with you. Finding that thing is mm -hmm. what it, you know. And I had someone when I worked at the city talk and talk to me about um, innovation. Like you have drone races. Like you create an obstacle course and you drive your drones through it. And these people come in and they sell drones and they sell all these things, which I think is awesome. And it's a maker's fair. Yeah. So you get to watch how they make marbles and then your kid can make a marble or you can buy a kit to go home and, and make a marble. But it's about making things, active mm -hmm. things, which I think is great. I have no idea how you do that or how you get it. And that may be something that you know brings in vendors from other places that you would hope would have a following that would I, I think that's a great idea, a way for us to actively help. Think about that. I mean, maybe we can brainstorm on that in the future as, as a way to help them, but also a way to help us and uh, collectively and get some people in the hotel for maybe a little bit longer, too. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't think there's such a thing as having too big of a festival. You know, uh, I've never heard Weston complain about their Apple Festival. There's been too many people visiting. They're going to start uh, meetings again in August. So that'd be a good time to have some ideas like that. You know, another thought would be the Kansas Sampler and the big Kansas road trip, as you guys know, started out as a festival mm -hmm. in Winfield, Kansas, on their farm. Mm -hmm. And then just evolving over time, now it moves around, which I think is really great. You know, they would have incredible contacts with all kinds of Kansas people who used to go to the Kansas Sampler. Well, why aren't we saying, hey, we got a street festival we can fit you all in here now they may not be around anymore who knows and the reality is we're buying from Amazon and Etsy Etsy and all those things we don't go walking down the street with a shopping bag because I can sit in my couch and buy anything I want and so it's a it's evolving and how do we evolve for the next thing do we learn to make things do we have a honeybee festival I don't, I don't know but I'm with you I think I don't think any of it can hurt and it's you know, I thought the um, zip line was a really, really cool thing. You know, and I thought it was unbelievable it was free. Yeah. You know, and so next year they're probably going to look for more sponsorships. And, and giving is down. People are just not donating like they were pre-COVID. And maybe businesses can't afford, you know, right now. And so, you know, giving is down. So they have to search for more ways to cut costs or generate revenue. And, yeah, innovate. Exactly. Innovate. Best, best innovations are forced. Yeah. Maybe a craft beer festival. Hey. We, and I'll tell you, I was on the committee <laughs> and we talked and talked about that. Yeah, they do bring in that. We'll go to Emporia and Wichita and Kansas City. We, you know, if we went to small scale, uh, the tabs, other people come here and they do wonderful. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't disagree with that. And, and, um, and it brings in people. We just had an author come in, that this second one that's coming that's done the beer tour yeah. and goes from brewery to brewery and will write a book about it from a brewery from that for background and everything. So, you know, that it's crap, the craft beer industry is still very uh, vibrant. Isn't it like the first Saturday in May or something, National Craft Beer Day? Um, it seemed like a couple of years ago, Brian Holt. They had a small mm -hmm. thing mm -hmm. down at Heritage Park yep. well, and that, showed. Yeah, that like, would be the homebrewers. Uh, or was that yeah, homebrewers? Yeah. yeah, it's called the Big Brew. Um, yeah, a lot of times we have the little homebrewers. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to plan a trip to Oregon. I have four states left to see, and Oregon is one of them. So I'm trying to get to Oregon. So I'm reading, you know, oh, the five things you got to do in Oregon. And one of them had, it was a person who you go down the Pacific Coast, and every town, they're like, this is a you know small brewery capital of the world. And they had a whole, these are the ones that you have to go to and why and where you get your glass and you know, all those kind of, it was a whole brewery tour that was, you know, two days or something, which mm -hmm. was pretty, pretty, Kansas needs one of those. You can do that in Portland all by itself. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> second. <laughs> I've got money to go hang. Well, did you second that? Well, I did second that. I can, real quick, if you don't mind me sharing a little bit, what the board 
you know, we're starting to spin back up as well. We're looking to do uh, some Independence Weekend activities. Um, I'll have a news release out about that, but we're going to start doing some the main holiday events, Labor Day weekend, we're going to do Labor Day Four. Um, we'll be doing the reading of the names on September 11th again. Um, we're looking to do an actualization ceremony to get back on track with that. The courts have contacted us, said that we can do it again on the 17th of September. Um, and then we're on board for being a part of the Veterans Weekend activities. Um, and then candlelight tour the first weekend of December. Um, it's been hard bringing volunteers back on. A lot of them are older and, and don't want to, to get out and do a whole lot yet. Um, but we're working to, uh, to try to invigorate some of the um, younger people in our town to, to become involved in, in history and making history. Um, so that's, that's a little of what's going on with the board. And any other ideas that you guys have, we'd love to talk. I have a question. Ask away. Fort Blair. It is now part of the National Park Service, correct? I cannot confirm or deny that it's an obligation to send it. Yeah, because <laughs> Trump signed the legislation. That's different. Um, what President Trump had signed was um, the John D. Dingell Jr. Act, which allowed us to increase our legislative boundaries. That didn't give us any property. That just allowed us to go into discussion with as a willing buyer for a, or a willing recipient from our willing seller or willing donator. Um, that didn't give us any land. That just allowed us uh, through our general management plan to look at sites that we could use to start um, in telling the story of the fort or moving operations out of historic buildings. Um, so that didn't acquire any land for us, no. Um, we've worked with the city and we've worked with the previous owners of Fort Blair um, on the acquisition of that property, and we've been able to send out those work on that. Yes, absolutely. Um, was there, there's another question I'm assuming that's involved with that. Is it going to be open to the public? Um, that hasn't been decided yet. Uh, it's, it will be from time to time uh, when it becomes an official park site, um, but it, at this time, uh, we have to make sure it's safe for the public. Um, we have to make sure that we're able to secure it properly um, and that nobody is uh, in there when it, it's not safe to be in there. Because there are stairs inside of it that have no railing. <laughs> I've never <laughs> seen inside of it. Yeah, well, I have. I used yeah. to hold the key to Fort Blair when I was <laughs> HPA president. Really? Like, Where is it? It's okay, in Scuba's Park. It's, it's been it's five different places around town. Um, <laughs> It started at 2nd and Scott Street. Um, there was three, what we call the nets, um, that were around town uh, during the Civil War, built in 1863, to be that front line if troops were to come into town. Um, so the only remaining one is Fort Blair, which a lot of people call the block house because it's a square house with a, uh, a feature. It's on scoop, it's right down by the, the wall at the Memorial Go past La Hacienda going up Main. You look off to your left, there's a square building out there with a little can inside. Yep, that's Fort Blair. Inside it, the last time I was, hmm. I was never inside it because it has a plexiglass thing over the door. Mm -hmm. so you, it's a diorama yeah. thing in there where it has mannequins and uniforms. No, no, no. It has, there's a uniform mannequin in there, there's a weapon in there, there's some old flags in there. Um, it's not, it's not yeah. really, it's certainly not Fort quality. It's, yeah, it's definitely not National Park Service. Was well, it privately owned? <laughs> um, yes, it's been privately owned all the way until this point. Even in being on Scuba's Plaza, it was privately owned? Yeah, the land was owned by the city and the building was owned by uh, the Western Insurance Company and the uh, um, Daughters of the American Revolution. And, and, yeah. Interesting thing about it, it used to sit where the um, creativity yeah. at first and it, Dr. McDonald, who started historic preservation in Berkeley County, he lived there in a big Victorian, and that he owned Lynette Blair, and it was in his yard as a playhouse for his kids. Hmm. And then when his house was coming down and Central Life was building their building, it got moved. Someone else bought it and it got moved. And there are photos of his home with the, with the house. In it. Yeah, we've got photos of it being moved all around. Yeah. It was moved onto Carroll Plaza in the middle of it's now the parade ground. It was moved to behind officers' quarters. 
um, and it was eventually moved out to its current location. But I was just contacted yesterday by another Marion office, mm -hmm. and they said there's a ribbon cutting there July 3rd at 11. I cannot confirm or deny those allegations, Sonia. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the ribbon cutting is. <laughs> so I'm supposed to be there, but I don't know what yeah. I'm going. You know, just bring scissors <laughs> you know, and ribbons. I was like, okay, ribbon cutting. Do there I need is, to bring scissors and ribbon? Or <laughs> Carl, here's a here's another aspect of Fort Blair. Fort Blair sat on the property where the court motel sits right now mm -hmm. for a period of time. Mm -hmm. But I believe this to be true. I believe that the Fort Blair got moved from its original location. Mm -hmm. Told you that because of the building of the buildings, which incorporated the post office. Of the 1800s. Yeah, it's been moved five times. And it moved over, it moved <laughs> over here and in 05 or whatever, 06, it was moved up to Dr. McDonald's property. And upon his yeah. passing, it was moved up to what was the, now the, the parade grounds of the fort, moved around in there, and then yep. his final resting place is where it is now. So. Yep. And the other but, yeah. interesting, weird thing about it yeah. is nobody knows who owns it. The city owns the land. But when we were trying to figure out, okay, somebody take claim, and it is the logo of Western Instruments. And so their employees group or whatever took care of it for a long time. And yep. the daughters of the American Revolution Unit. And everybody had to sign a form that said, we don't own this thing. We don't own this. We don't own this thing. Mm. Because no one had any documents of ownership. No, there was, there was record of ownership of the building. There was never record of ownership of the land or the connection of it. And the National Park Service can't take a building that land and they couldn't nobody could show ownership of the land other than the city <coughs> so that's and the city can give that the city it has gone through them. the process yeah. yes yeah. Um, and yeah it it ultimately has been signed over to the park service but as far as the activities and things are still before you very good thank you very much yeah. I yield back yeah. <laughs> there's a motion on the floor Yes, sir. Thank you. 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 Thank